building on Cyberland. We say good morning to you. Welcome to another service at the Harvest. We want to welcome you to enjoy the Harvest experience. Can we welcome you officially? Welcome to the Harvest. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the Harvest, where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the Harvest, where the table is spread. Come on, my brothers and sisters, give God your hand. Welcome to the Harvest. Welcome to the Harvest. We're glad. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the Harvest. Welcome to the Harvest. Where the Spirit Where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the Harvest. Welcome to the Harvest. Where the table. Where the table is spread. Come on. Well, it is another first Sunday the Lord allowed us to be in his breath. Oh, y'all clapping your hands. I see all these smiles. Oh, y'all got jokes today. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let me see them teeth. Let me see them. Let me see them. Let me see them. Come on, clap your hands. Has God been good to anyone in the building? Has God made a way for anyone in the building? Is he still working miracles? Is he still pouring out you blessings that you ain't got rude enough to receive him? <laughs> we bless him and we give him glory. Come on, we just want to have a little old Sunday morning church. Is that all right? Some hand clapping, foot stomping, <laughs> tongue talking, some Pentecostal baptism, church of God in Christ. <laughs> Come on, clap your hands with us this morning. Come on. Oh, I see you clapping your hands. That's right. We bless him and we give him glory. The Lord is blessing me right now. Is that your testimony? That the Lord is blessing me right now. Yes, sir. Come on, family. Well, the Lord. The Lord. Come on, it's blessing me. It's blessing me. Uh huh. Right now. Right now. Yes, sir. Oh, right now. Come on, I said the Lord. I said the Lord. It's blessing me. Come on, right now. Right now. Oh, right now. Come on, Sam. He woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. I better say. And started me. And started me. The Lord, the Lord, oh, he's blessing me. It's blessing me. When is he doing it? Right now. When is he doing it? Oh, right now. Come on, say it again, our Lord. I said, the Lord. Come on, it's blessing me. It's blessing me. When is he doing it? Right now. Oh, right now. Oh, right now. Come on, what did he do? He woke me. He woke me up this morning. Tell him me on my way. Yeah. Is he doing it? Right now. Listen. Oh, right now. Second verse. He woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. Come on, I was cold. I was cold in my right mind. Guess what? He did it. He did. Let me sleep too late. Let me sleep too late. What did he do? He woke me, woke me, woke me right on time. <laughs> he woke me up. He woke me up this morning. Started me, started me on. Me on. One more time, he woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. Come on, say it again. He woke me. He woke me up this morning. <laughs> he woke me up. He woke me up this morning. Oh, one more time, saints. He woke me up this morning. Come on, I was cold. I was cold in my right mind. That's what he did it. He did it. Let me sleep too late. Let me sleep too late. He woke me. Come on, he woke me up. He woke me up this morning. What did he do? And yeah, me yeah. On my way. Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah. He's blessing me. When is he doing it? Right now. Oh, right now. Come on, 
is he doing? Right now. All right Come now. on, can you put your hands together, everybody? Oh, if it, oh, I see you. I, the Lord is blessing you, and he's doing it right now. Isn't that something? Woo! Come on, tennis. Come on, family. Come on, the Lord. The Lord. Come on, join. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. Oh, right now. Y'all better say the Lord. The Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. Come on, Sopranos, join. The Lord, the Lord is blessing me, is blessing me right, now. Right, now. right now. He is blessing me. The Lord, the Lord. The Lord is blessing me right now. 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 Come on. He woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. It started me on. The Lord, 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 is blessing me. What are you doing it right now? Right now. Oh, right now. Oh, clap your hands if you know that he is. Uh oh, y'all clapping your hands like you know he's been good to you. I saw your mama why I need this. Y'all clapping your hands like you know he's been good to you. I got all these smiles. So y'all know that he's still a way maker. <laughs> y'all still know he working miracles. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's still blessing me. No, tell your neighbor, he's still blessing me. And guess what? Tell him he's doing it right now. He ain't doing it tomorrow. He's not doing it. He can do it now. He can't do it. But touch your neighbor and say, he's doing it right now. Tell your neighbor, he's doing it right now. No, tell him he's doing it right now. He blessing your finances right now. He's blessing your health right now. He's mending your family right now. He's bringing it all together right now. Hey, he's doing it right now. I don't care what it looks like and what the enemy got to say about it, but the Lord is still blessing right now. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding, more abundantly above we can ever act to think according to the power that worketh within us. Look to your neighbor one more time and I'm going to leave it alone. But tell your neighbor, the Lord is blessing me. No, tell him, the Lord is blessing me. And tell him he's doing it right now. I ain't got no sad story to tell you. But tell him he's doing it right now. I know you see us crying. You might see me going through a certain chapter. But tell him he's going to bless me. Come on, tell him he's blessing me right now. Tell him, hang on in there. You're going to feed the rest of the chapter. Doris, they go going to see the rest of it. I ain't going to bother with it, but tell him he's blessing me right now. <laughs> yes, Lord. Come on, continue to worship the Lord. Continue to bless his name and to give him glory. Because the Lord is blessing us, every bit of our hallelujah belongs to him. Because the Lord is blessing us, every, every bit of our thank you, Jesus, belongs to him. Because the Lord is blessing us, every bit of our Lord, I love you, belongs to him. Come on, can we worship the Lord right there? You deserve 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Certainly we thank God, amen, for all of our sanctuary saints that are present this morning to all our streamers, amen. We certainly thank God for our digital disciples. And God, we pray, continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in. Um, pray for Mother Hazel Birch. Pray for Sister Barbara Moore. Amen. I see Christine is in our midst. We thank God for all um, the bereaved family. Uh, Mary Garrett went on to be with the Lord in her home celebration, her home going celebration, I should say, will be on Friday at 4 o'clock at the Second Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. She is the sister of our very own Smiley. Amen. And so she will be celebrated on this Friday at 4 o'clock at Second Canaan. Amen. All right, let's jump right into Bible country. Amen. We thank God for all of our um, guests with us. We don't call them visitors here at the Harvest Church. Yes, you could have worshipped anywhere today. But you decide to come by the Harvest Church, and we want you to know we are so grateful 
that you are worshiping with us. Amen. And you, your presence, have made this worship service better. Amen. We salute our deacons, our ministers, our officers, and our friends. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. Amen. Matthew 7. And we'll start at verse 7. And we're not um, bothering you, but we're asking you to stand for the reading of the word. Amen. If you have a Bible or not, just stand for the reading of the word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God shall stand forever. Matthew chapter 7. Go all the way down to verse 7. There you'll find, amen, our lesson for the day, 7 through 11. I'm not going to preach it all today. I have to cut it up in three parts. Amen. It says, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek. And ye shall find, knock, and it shall be open unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks for bread, would give him a stone? If he asks for fish, but give him a snake or a serpent. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? 7 through 11. And y'all don't know when to shout. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 7. We know that God's word is already blessed. May he bless the hearers and doers of his already blessed word. You may rest yourselves now in the very presence of the almighty God. I want to start this series, amen, as we win in 2022. I want to talk about the expectation of supplication. The expectation of supplication. Or oh, put that in your Facebook box. The expectation of supplication. Supplication, or to supplicate, just a big fancy word for petition or prayer or humbly asking God for something. I've discovered that many of us, we go through so much, but we rarely take time to pray about what we're going through. I think I ought to take my time. We call ourselves Christ-like and even Christians. We even call ourselves disciples of the Most High. But we struggle, amen, with things in our lives, and we rarely go to God in prayer. The hymn writers say, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Listen to the writer now. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. The songwriter didn't stop there. He said, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to take everything to God in prayer. The little things, the medium things, the big things, the jumbo things, you got to take everything to God in prayer. I know we feel we can handle certain things, uh, but we know somebody that can handle everything. You ought to give God a hand clap of praise right there. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we go through this series, this exp the expectation of supplication, we're going to deal with the commitment to prayer today. Next week, we're going to deal with the covenant in prayer and then the confidence in prayer. From the pericope we read earlier in the text from 7 through 11, we're going to deal with the commitment to prayer, the covenant in prayer, the confidence in prayer. Brothers and sisters, prayer is the greatest tool the Christian has. Did y'all hear what I say? Prayer is the greatest tool you have, and it's the most underused tool 
at the Christian's disposal. Y'all mighty quiet today. Prayer is the greatest tool God has given us. This vehicle of prayer can take you, amen, from tragedy to triumph. Y'all mighty quiet. It can take you from misery to a miracle. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you in a minute. It'll take you from a burden to a blessing if you could just understand the power of prayer. Prayer is the greatest tool that the Christian has. It is through prayer that we make our petitions known unto God. We will never be any stronger spiritually than our prayer life. Uh-oh. <laughs> I know you think you're a super Christian. I know you think you got it going on, but you're not ever going to be as strong as your prayer life. Some of y'all some of y'all got all upset already because some of y'all know you don't pray. But you're around here trying to run things. Amen. Amen. How you, you, You're only as strong as your prayer life. Ain't no way around it. You, 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 you can know all the Bible you want. You can speak in all the tongues you want. You will only be as strong as you're communicating to God. Look at somebody and say, that's where the power comes from. It comes from the almighty God. And see those, I, 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 do I have any prayer warriors in here? Where my prayer warriors? I, I see you, I see you. See, the prayer warriors, y'all not going to like when I say this, the prayer warriors don't wait for Pastor Thompson to come pray for them. Oh, it's getting tight now. When you can talk to God for yourself, you don't have to wait for anybody to come and pray for you. You can lay hands on yourself and be recovered. You can pray. Y'all mighty quiet in here. And that's what the problem is. We empower other leaders with our prayer life. No, prayer life, your prayer life, here it is, is your prayer life. Don't it make sense? Your prayer life. <laughs> Is your prayer life. Listen, there, there, there's some things I, I, I can't pray you out of. Especially, amen, if you don't believe what I'm praying. Oh, y'all quiet now. And the reason why many of us don't pray, we really don't believe that God can do what he said he can do. Because if we believe that we'll be on our knees praying constantly, we'll pray without ceasing. I wish I had a witness here. We'll pray with some expectation that when I supplicate to God, God late in the midnight hour going to turn some things around. The, the, the commitment to prayer. I just want to deal with this. I can't preach at all. We're going we gonna to break it down with the commitment to prayer. That's the first sermon in this series. Somebody say the commitment to prayer. Yeah, here our Lord conveys the need for committed prayer. Hey, y'all see it? Yeah, yeah. He, he says, ask and it shall be given. Seek, ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. That sounds like some commitment. I'm going to ask, I'm going to seek, and I'm going to knock. I'm going to ask I'm going to seek, and I'm going to knock. Ask, and it shall be given to you. For everyone that asks it, receive it. That is very simple, my brothers and sisters, but also extremely profound. We cannot expect God to answer a prayer that we never prayed. Y'all mighty quiet. Y'all mighty quiet. Here's my first point. I want to talk about the participation in, involved. The participation involved. The reason why God, amen, gave us this tool, this vehicle, amen, and Leo of prayer is because, y'all going to shout when I tell you this, he want you to participate in your own miracle. Somebody didn't get it. He wants your fingerprints of faith to be on your own miracle. Amen. So you can tell somebody, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Because some folk want to help you to brag about it. Y'all missed it. 
There's some folk that want to help you so they can take credit for your, y'all ain't helping me, for your success. But God wants you to participate in your miracle. He wants you to participate in your deliverance. I got Bible. Very simple but extremely profound. We cannot expect God to answer prayers that are never prayed. We need to learn to ask the Lord for our needs. Let me take a poll of the congregation. Anybody in here have needs? Okay, there we go. Amen. If you have a need, amen, I know somebody that can fulfill your need. I, I, I can even dare say this. I know somebody that can take care of all of your needs. Every last one of your needs. Wake your neighbor up and say, neighbor, I know a man that can give you everything you need. He desires us to come before him with all our needs in an attitude of faith. Watch this. Believing he will hear and answer our prayers. Here, here's what the half-brother of Jesus said, James, in James 4 and 2, ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet ye have not because you act. Somebody read the book. Look at your neighbor and say, you have not because you ask not. That thing you really want, you don't have it because you didn't ask God for it. I wish I had a witness here. You weren't committed to the asking. You weren't committed to the knocking. You weren't committed, y'all ain't helping me, to the petitioning. You got to ask. You got to seek. You got to knock. Yeah, James said, you have not because you ask not. First John 5, 14 through 15 is saying, this is the confidence that we know that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, that's the key. That's the key, according to his will. Some of our asking is outside of his will. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> I don't mean to turn this into a Bible study, but some of us, are asking of things that's not in his will. And you can't get mad with God, and you can't get mad with yourself. Amen. You got to know what is the will of God for your life. He has a permissive will, but he also have a perfect will. And many of us are asking things that God, amen, does not want us to have. <laughs> That's why, my brothers and sisters, it's important to read your word daily. Amen. Just don't pick it up on Sunday morning at 930. Open the book. Amen. And you will find out the will of God for your life. And once you get the will of God for your life, you can petition him to fulfill that will. Am I making any sense? And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, he heareth us, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, uh, whatsoever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions that we desired of him. It's good to have somebody that hears you. There's nothing more frustrating to be talking to somebody that don't hear you. But today, this morning, just know within your heart, uh, amen, when you open your mouth, God hears you. He may not come when you want to come, but he already heard you. And when he show up, he's going to be right on time. Can you look at your name and say, he's an on time God? Yes, he is. You got to know, you got to know, you got to participate in this thing. That's why I like, amen, amen, when Jesus showed up to Mary and Martha's situation, their brother Lazarus was dead, amen, he showed up, amen. He said, show me where you laid him. I want you to participate in this thing, amen. Then when he got to the part, to the point where they ran out of gas, where they stopped believing, where they stopped doubting, amen, it was a stone. He told them to roll the stone. Oh, y'all missing it. He said, participate in this thing. I need you to show me where you gave up. I need you to show me what's blocking your faith. 
Can I talk to the church today? You got to show God uh, where you ran out of gas, where you broke down, amen, and show him uh, what's in your way. He's going to tell you, show me where it's at, and when you get there, I want you to roll a stone away because what I got to do is going to be a miracle. In it, watch this now, God's not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. That's one thing the sisters could do, show him, and then the people could roll the stone away. We can do that for ourselves. We want God to sh show up, roll things away. God said, no, I got a bigger task at hand. I got to call somebody from death back to life. You can't do that, but I can. Look at your neighbor and say, but do what you can do. And let me tell you how you roll stones away. Let me tell you how you show him where you just by getting on your knees and petitioning him and say, Lord, it's me, not my mother, not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Somebody say participation. You got to learn how to participate. God ain't gonna do everything for you. He 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 woke you up. The least you could do is get up. Once he woke you up and you got up, least he could do is get back down on your knees and tell him thank you. What are you thanking him for? Thanking him for another day that you never seen before and shall never see again. Some of us are so unthankful, so un ungrateful, we, we, we wake up and be mad with God. Listen, every time God w wakes you up, it's another opportunity to right those things you have wrong. It's another opportunity for God to turn it around late in the midnight hour. It's another opportunity for God to flip your script. When he wakes you up, you ought to be excited. You ought to be celebrating God and say, I was glad when he said unto me let us go to church participation involved look at the participation involved bless I hold you too long we're gonna move from the participation involved to the passion involved seek and ye shall find he that Seek it, find it. This reveals seeking with the purpose of finding. <laughs> that takes passion. One of the things, one of the games I didn't like coming up was hide and seek. Because I got tired of looking for people that didn't want to be found. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Y'all to get it on the way home. Leo got it. You're, you're literally looking for people who is hiding from you. And the winner is the one that has eluded you finding them. I, I, I hate it, that game. Ticket, ticket, no be, no be, no be. All of my friends gone to heaven, won't be back to June 11. <laughs> Y'all all grew up in the projects too? Then come the countdown and you try to find folk that don't want to be found. That's what I like about God, it look different. He said, if you seek, your soul going to find. And the reason we're not finding what we need is because we're really not looking for it. Oh, y'all y'all, mighty quiet. See, the seeking comes in digging through the scripture. We have no passion for the word of God. If we're going to win, we got to win with the word of God. We like to be entertained, but we don't want to be educated. If you want to hide something from a Negro, put it in a book. That's why I put my money at it when I'm home. I done gave it away now. We don't run to books like we should. We don't want to be taught. We want to be entertained. That's why TikTok is so 
popular. That's why social media is so popular. It's a form of entertainment. And while I'm, I got 42 people on the stream, I pray these 42 people share this. Let's flood the amen social media with something positive like the word of God. I pray that y'all that's sitting here, y'all go home and get on your social media and share this amen sermon about prayer, the expectation of supplication. Let's put something productive on our social media pages. He said, if you seek, if you have passion enough to go after what you need, you will find it. In other words, y'all gonna like, don't, 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 don't shout when I tell you this. God is not hiding what you need from you. He's not hiding it, but he wants to make sure you are committed and serious about what you what your needs are. Oh, y'all got quiet on that. See, it, 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 see, see, this passion reveals commitment and a sense of urgency. It presents the idea of seeking diligently for something of great value. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That don't mean God is lost. We're the lost ones. But you will find him if you diligently seek him. If you change your focus. Some of us, uh, and that's, that's pretty much what social media is. It's a distraction. <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all ain't helping me here. And he wants us to stop being distracted and stop seeking stuff that is unproductive and unfruitful. And start seeking some things with some purpose and some productivity. I got two claps. That means all y'all on social media right now while I'm preaching. Amen. We have a committed, we have to be committed to keeping of our eternal souls to him. We know that God has exactly what we need and the ability to provide it to us. But even the woman who had a daughter grievously vexed by a demon came seeking him and say, Master, my daughter is at home grievously vexed with a spirit, a demonic spirit. And he told that woman, here it is, it is not meat for me to give this bread to the dogs. But she kept knocking. She kept seeking. She said, you know what, Jesus, you're right. I'm a dog. I'm not a Jew. But she told him this. Listen to me. Look, 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 look at her passion. She said, but even the dog get the crumbs that falls from the master's table. I wish I had some folk in here. Amen. When you go to Jesus, you're not taking no for an answer. That you know if he's a deliverer and your children or your child need deliverance, don't take no for an answer. Tell them even the dogs get the crumb. How many know that a crumb for Jesus is all we really need? Because the same ingredients that's in the loaf of bread is in that crumb. Look at somebody say, there's power in the crumb. Y'all mighty quiet. I don't need a whole job to make it if you just bless me with a part-time job. There's power in the crumb. I don't need a bank full of money, but just get y'all ain't helping me. There's power in the crumb. I have learned to make it on bits and pieces when I put it in God's hand. It's in the best hands I can ever put it in. Look, look at your neighbor and say, I'm a witness. I can make it on a crumb. I can make it on a crumb. There's power in the crumb, especially when you got passion in your heart. We must seek the Lord in prayer as if we sought something of great value, fully expecting to find what we need. I know this ain't going to shout you, but it's going to shape you. There's something you need. There's something I need. There's something you need. Now, notice I didn't say want. 
I said, there's something you need. And it's amazing. We go after our wants more than we go after our needs. We have passion for wants and have no passion for our needs. Y'all know I'm talking the truth. We got to have this, we got to have more passion going after what we need and less passion of going after what we want. Because sometimes what we want is not what we need. Can I say that slower? Sometimes what we want is not what we need. So where is your passion? If you're going to have expectation for supplication, you got to have some passion involved when it comes to your prayer life. Yeah, not only not only do you have to have my brother and sister participation involved, amen, but your participation must include some passion. You'll never get anything worth anything without seeking it, going after it, knocking and asking. Asking who? Asking the almighty God. I wish I had a witness. There, there, there's some things we really need, and we seldom go to God in prayer. Let's be honest. Amen. Give me three minutes. Amen. There's some things we really need, and we seldom go to God. Some of you need a better attitude. You ain't go to God yet. Man, I'm 50 years old. I ain't scared of none of y'all. Amen. Some of you are meaner than a rattlesnake. And have yet went to God and said, God, I've been told by several people that my attitude is despicable. And I'm asking you, God, in faith to change my attitude. No, but you you praying for somebody else. You praying against everybody else. But you don't go to God for other. And sometimes you got to go, God, amen, on your own behalf with your own dysfunctions, with your own deficiencies, with your own impur impurities. All of us have issues. From the pulpit to the back pew, all of us have issues. All of us are struggling with something, but we're trying to fix everybody but ourselves. I know I got issues. But the difference between you and I, I don't mind telling God to fix me. I don't mind telling God to change me. I don't mind telling God, amen, to humble me. I don't mind telling God, amen, to create in me a clean heart and renew in me the right spirit. I refuse to walk around here with a demonic spirit because I know a deliverer. Yeah, we got to be committed. We got to participate. We got to have passion. Y'all not going to like this last one. The participation involved, the passion involved. For if everyone that asks it receive it, and he that seek it find it, and to him that knock it, it shall be open. Then he says in verse 7, knock, ask, and seek. We see the participation involved. We see the passion involved. I'm, I'm almost scared to say this because y'all don't like this word. But we need the patience involved. Because, <laughs> see, you can knock. And some of y'all wanted to open on the first knock. And then get mad with God because you done knocked one time. And the dough didn't budge. You about to have a tantrum. Because you went and you, you start seeking, and you only been seeking for two minutes. You asked one time. Now you mad with the world, and you mad with God because you have no patience. 
Knock and it shall be open unto you to him that knock it, it shall be open. Prayer requires participation and passion, but it also requires patience. We must intercede at the door of faith and wait there until it opens. Somebody say wait. Yeah, we got to wait until it opens. Like last week, we have to be unfaithful until the end. God will reward faithful and fervent prayers with fulfillment. You can't get fulfillment without being faithful and fervent. Y'all missed that. He may not answer as we desire or expect, but he will always be what we need. He may not always answer your first prayer or your second prayer. <laughs> Or your third prayer. Or your fourth prayer. He may not answer you the first week. Or the second week. Or the third week. He may not answer you on the first month. The second month or the third month. But you got to hang on in there. Because I've discovered, y'all not going to like what I'm about to say. I've discovered sometimes a no answer is an answer. Boy, I feel pretty good here. Sometimes when he don't answer you, he's really answering you because sometimes we're asking for things we don't need. And you got to be patient enough and mature enough to say if God did not answer me, he really did answer me. Maybe he's protecting me from myself. See, some of y'all talking about, oh, protect me from this one and protect me from that one. When you going to ask God to protect you from you? You the one making bad choices. You the one making bad decisions. You the one. He has given the power of choice to. Somebody shout patience. We must intercede at the door of faith until it is open. God will reward faithful and fervent prayers with fulfillment. He may not answer as we desire or expect, but it will always be. He will always be, but he will always be, but he will always be what we need. If he don't give you what you want, he will always be what you need. Y'all don't know when to shout. He may not always answer the first time we pray. In fact, he may even deny our request. But remember, when God says no, he has a better yes on the way. I got one guy. I got one that guy. Can y'all help me get this through your neighbor's spirit? Say, when God says no, it's because he got a better yes on the way. I wish I had some folk that can wait for the better yes. Look at somebody say, he got a better yes on the, no, no, find somebody that's engaged. Say, I want to let you know he has a better yes for you. If we continue to knock, continue to seek, continue to ask. Thank you, Sister Juanita. The door of his abundance will eventually open. Do I have a witness in the building? We on great time. Listen, this is a personal question. What do you really need? And when you find out what you really need, ask yourself, are you participating in getting it? Do you have a passion for it? And do you possess the patience to wait for it? My Bible says they that wait upon the Lord. They don't get no weaker. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like an eagle and fly above the storm. They shall get run and not get weary. Walk and not faint. Look at somebody say, there's a blessing in waiting. We live in a microwavable society. 
We want everything instantly. We want instant rice. We want, that's why we, amen, amen. We don't care when the stove break down. We get mad when the microwave break down. I ain't studying no stove no more. If the microwave go out, we got to go to Brands Ma and get us a microwave. Because we want our meal in one minute, two minutes. Y'all ain't helping me. We want to warm it up in 30 seconds. We don't want to wait for a home cooked meal. We ain't shelling peas no more. We ain't soaking beans overnight on the stove number. No we want it instantly. We in a hurry. And that transferred, amen, into our faith. Amen. Even in our faith, we want to be in a hurry. And it's amazing. We want people to change overnight, but we want to take our time. Oh, y'all to get that on the way home. They want you to change overnight, but they taking their sweet time. Enjoying God's grace and God's mercy, but you have to change overnight. They have no patience for your change, but they have all the patience for their personal change. So if you're going to have patience, have patience across the board. What are you standing in need of? Huh? First day in May. May 1st. First Sunday in May. We're already in the fifth month of this year. And I beseech you, my dear brethren, that you take this year in with prayer. Oh, you probably didn't do right January, February, March, or April. But now that you got the accountability and the responsibility, I, I beseech you that every, I beseech you that you get a prayer life starting today. Because you're only going to be as strong spiritually as your prayer life. Keep knocking. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Because the God I serve, he has the power to turn things around. How are you in a relationship that get on your nerve, but you ain't pray about it yet? You, you know what that tells me? Y'all going to get mad when I say that. You really don't want it to work for real. If you really wanted it to work, you'll take it to the Lord in prayer. If you really want to enjoy your local church, whatever church you go to, instead of complaining about it, you'll take it to the Lord in prayer. We like dysfunction. We like to be at war with people. We like to fight. Amen. But we don't want to fight the good fight of faith. The Bible say, watch, fight, and pray. You don't want it to change. Because you're not praying for the change. You don't want to change. Because you ain't praying to change. You're comfortable with being comfortable. But Jesus said, you got to participate in this thing. You got to have passion for this thing. And last but not least, you have to be patient. Let us stand. That's the commitment to prayer. Next week, we'll deal with, on Mother's Day, the covenant in prayer from the same text. It's called a series. Amen. If you're here today, whether in the sanctuary or on the stream, in the sanctuary or on the stream, there's nothing like having someone to talk to. I've discovered when you talk to God, he never cuts you off. He never interrupts you. 
That's what I'm offering you today. I'm offering you a relationship with God. I'm the type of preacher, I don't preach religion. I preach an authentic relationship with God. And if you're in any relationship, here it is, any relationship requires communication. Prayer is nothing more than communicating with God. Supplicating to God. Humbly petitioning God on either your or someone else's behalf. But I can't talk to God if I don't know God. And I have to know him, my brothers and sisters, in the pond of my sin. He, God, answered man's need by giving us Jesus. Jesus answered God's will by laying down his life. God raised his son three days later from the grave. His crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection won our salvation. So that's why I'm here petitioning you. If you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, come now. By way of stream, or if you're in the sanctuary, come. If Deacon Derek Thomas is on our stream, you can inbox him or inbox me. If you want to connect to this ministry by way of technology, but if you're in the sanctuary, you can come now. Come. Come get this God to talk to. Come. Participate in your own miracle. Come. Get this passion that will get you through anything. Come and have patience and allow God to turn it around. Pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me the right spirit. I believe you sent Jesus to die for me. I believe he didn't stay dead. He got up with all power in his hand. I'm confessing with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And I'm willing to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Streamers, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to know that you are saved. You are now in the ark of safety. Find you a church, amen, that teaches Bible principles, teaches the word of God, and watch what God does. He will change you from the inside out. Won't he do a church? Amen. I'm a living witness. He'll change you from the inside out. God bless you. God keep you. Now the streamers that are still on, if you want me to lead you through communion, amen, prepare, amen, your sacraments, the sacraments, I should say, um, get your bread and get your juice, and I will lead you through communion. Streamers, are we ready? Father God, we pray now that you bless me, for we know your body and blood is already blessed. God, forgive me of all of my sins, the ones I did by omission and the ones I did by commission. God, I thank you for winning my salvation. I thank you, God, for laying down your life for me. God, nobody loved me like you. And God, we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To my streamers on a Thursday night, Jesus sat at the table and he took bread he blessed it, and he told him, take ye all of it. Pray that you all take in the bread. After, after they supped, he took the cup. He gave thanks and told him, drink ye all of it. He shared with them that the bread was symbolic of his body and that the wine was symbolic of his blood. It will be shed for the remission of sins for all mankind. He took them through a crash course in humility and servitude. He took the towel and he washed their feet. He wanted them to know it's not about your title. It will always be about the towel. 
want them to know that you ought to treat people the same because he washed Judas' feet the same way he washed John's feet. Y'all missed that. John was considered the beloved disciple. He loved some John. Judas is considered the betrayer, the backstabber, the one that turned Jesus in, but he washed their feet the same. Never, li- never allow your enemy or the backstab or the betrayer to bring you down to their level. Stay who you are in God, and God can handle the rest. Because if you know the story, Judas went out and threw a rope around a tree and hung himself. That's the lesson for all of us. You don't have to fight Judas. He will always hang himself. Can I get a witness in the building? And so we thank you for tuning in. We thank you, amen, for worshiping with us on today. This concludes our stream. Amen. We'll see you second Sunday in May.